Good morning. What a difference a day makes, huh? What a beautiful day out there today. Welcome uh, to Pleasant Street United Methodist Church this morning. To all of the, those joining us online, welcome. Uh, this Tuesday's Bible study time features another installment of Leanne Steenhoek's. Oh, did I say? Oh, not bad. Steenhoek's uh, There is a River series. Pleasant Street and St. Luke's Joint Charge Conference is scheduled this year for November 16th at 6.30 p.m. If you have a form to fill out with regard to this, please reach out to Pastor Ben for details about the online portal that has been set up to streamline the process. Offerings, tithes, and pledges can be sent by check to 8 Pleasant Street, Salem, New Hampshire, or placed in our offering plate. Are there any other announcements? All right, I believe Pastor Ben, you have an announcement. Good morning, all. Uh, just an announcement that this afternoon, uh, there will be a memorial service here in Call Hall for Nate Wood. Uh, many of, some of you may remember Nate Wood. He passed on during the pandemic and his brother Tom uh, reached out to have a memorial service because during that time, uh, of course, those things were not happening. And so um, this afternoon, 3 p.m., there'll be a celebration of life for Nate Wood, a former member here at Pleasant Street. And just a reminder to those uh, SPRC members that there will be a meeting um, this evening over at Hope Center. It will be a hybrid meeting at 6 p.m. All right. We'll go to our call to worship. Please join me. Come into this sacred space to worship God. Whose directions are sure. Come into this holy place to worship God. Standards are right, whose commandment is clear, whose judgments are true. Come with holy fear to be given life and made wise, to have your heart stirred and your eyes open wide. Come, let us worship God. Let the words of our mouths and the whispering of our hearts be according to your will, O God. opening prayer. O Heavenly Father, who has filled the world with beauty, open our eyes to behold thy gracious hand in all your works, that rejoicing in your whole creation, we may learn to serve you with gladness for the sake of him through whom all things were made, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please join in our opening hymn, Sanctuary, from uh, The Faith We Sing, number 2164.
Good morning. You may be seated. Welcome to worship at Pleasant Street United Methodist Church. Welcome to all joining us through the live stream today. I'm Pastor Ben. I invite you at this time to share joys, concerns. Before you do, I have a joy. Kay will be celebrating 99 years of life <laughs> coming up this October 24th. Her address is 14 Telfer Circle in Salem, if you'd like to send a card um, or drop in for a visit. Call first, of course. Um, but she would welcome, um, yeah, that, that little touch. 99 year, years. Mm. Kay Pancioco, yes. Other joys, concerns? Sally. Praise God. Sally sharing the joy that she is feeling better after having been through COVID and back with us. And also the joy that her eye surgery was successful to the extent that she no longer needs glasses for driving. And this is after one eye. And so uh, she anticipates another surgery coming up next week. So do keep Sally in prayer and sharing the joy of a good outcome there. Praise God. Continued prayers and a concern for Sally's brother Fred whose wife, Joanne, is still in hospice and um, is slipping fast. So please do keep um, Sally and her brother and family in prayer. Bernie. Bernie sharing the concern over violence in the Middle East over the last 48 hours. Prayers for peace and for God's wisdom to prevail. Um, God's chosen people, Israel, and um, that understanding and a path of trust and grace would be discerned um, through this time. Thank you, Bernie. Well, let's enter into our time of prayer with our prayer hymn, O oh Lord, hear my prayer.
all-encompassing one. God of all creation. We come before you humbled, grateful, at times confused, at times disheartened. At times failing for words. And yet, ever and always you are. Just a few minutes earlier, God, you know that there was a joy here on the pulpit, which I did not share, but will now. The proceeds that have come to the church through the clothing shed that is on this property. Thank you, God. Helping to clothe more than 8,000 people around the world. Almost 45,000 pounds of clothing came to our shed in 2022. God, we thank you for recovery from illness, for eyes made clear Thank you for your abiding love. In transition, minister your healing consoling presence, God. <coughs> Pour out your spirit in the Middle East. That a capacity to See through your eyes, God. A capacity to extend love in the most trying of circumstances. would awaken hope, 
would awaken the prospect and the promise of your kingdom among the people of Israel, the people of Palestine. to embrace the chosenness that you have proclaimed over all people who call on you in faith and trust. Let your wisdom prevail, your will be done, Holy One. here on earth as it is in heaven. And God, it is with the trust of children of God that we pray the prayer which Jesus taught his disciples our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our first scripture reading this morning is from Isaiah 5, verses 1 through 7. I will sing for my beloved my love song concerning his vineyard. My beloved had a vineyard on a very fertile hill. He dug it and cleared it of stones and planted it with choice vines. He built a watchtower in the midst of it and hewed out a wine vat in it. He expected it to yield grapes, but it yielded rotten grapes. And now inhabitants of Jerusalem and people of Judea judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I have not done in it? When I expected it to yield grapes, why did it yield rotten grapes? And now I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will remove its hedge, and it shall be devoured. I will break down its wall, and it shall be trampled down. I will make it a wasteland. It shall not be pruned or hoed, and it shall be overgrown with briars and thorns. I will also command the clouds that they rain no rain upon it, for the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the people of Judea are his cherished garden. He expected justice but saw bloodshed, righteousness but heard a cry. Our second reading is from Philippians 3, verses 10 through 14. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death, if somehow I may maintain may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to lay hold of that for which Christ has laid hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider that I have laid hold of it, but one thing I have laid hold of, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. I press on toward the goal, toward the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. Please stand as you are able for the gospel reading. <clears throat> Our gospel reading is from Matthew 21, verses 31 through 46. Listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he leased it to tenants and went away. When the harvest time had come, he sent his slaves to the tenants to collect his produce. 
But the tenants seized his slaves and beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again, he sent other slaves, more than the first, and they treated them in the same way. Then he sent his son to them, saying, They will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and get his inheritance. So they seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. Now when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do, those tenants? They said to him, he will put those wretches to a miserable death and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the harvest time. Jesus said to them, have you never read in the scriptures the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? This was the Lord's doing, and it is amazing in our eyes. Therefore, I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that produces its fruits. The one who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces, and it will crush anyone on whom it falls. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard his parables, they realized that he was speaking about them. They wanted to arrest him, but they feared the crowds because they regarded him as a prophet. May God add his blessings to these readings. Amen. We had yet another joy to share, and that is we have a guest today, June's daughter. Welcome. <laughs> Great to have you with us. Today's message, The Stone Rejected. Today we come to another parable, another story, which Jesus tells as a direct challenge to the nation's religious and political leaders of his day, without any room for mistake. A parable, as we have discussed before, is a story told to creatively teach its listeners a lesson or principle. It is a fictional tale that holds great truth. Parables are short, often vivid portrayals of characters to whom we can easily relate and empathize inviting us as listeners to enter the story as well. We have visited the power of stories quite a bit together over these past few years. Stories are important because they describe reality as it is in a particular way. And then as we bring the story to bear in the present, as we believe it, relate to it, interact with it, play with it, live into it, and by our actions, recreate it. We carry it on into the future in self-repeating cycles. Like certain songs we can't stop singing to ourselves, stories are sticky. As one scholar puts it, a story is both a model of and a model for reality, describing what was and is and projecting that model forward into the future for what will be as our actions align to reinforce and reinscribe the story once again. In our scripture reading for this week, Jesus caps the parable he tells, the story of the vineyard, with a statement for quoting the Psalms. The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The stone rejected. I would like to share a story with you from earlier this week, which offers a glimpse of how the story of God's mysterious ways amidst the vineyard is being written among us today, and how we as a congregation might enter it as well. This past week, I was offered the gift of taking part in a pastor's retreat through the United Methodist Foundation. The retreat was facilitated by Reverend Michael Beck, who shared about a ministry he's a part of called Fresh Expressions. Pastor Beck has conducted seminars and teachings throughout the Methodist Connection. He's an ordained elder in the UMC from the Florida Annual Conference. He's also a seminary professor and a father of eight with a blended family. 
His wife, Jill, is an ordained UMC elder as well. Serving, she also serves a church in Florida. It was greatly encouraging to hear that much of what Pastor Beck had to share over our days in retreat affirmed the path that we have been walking this year with Houses of Peace. You may recall the stirring of the spirit that had our congregations prepare, train, lay on hands, and commission sowers of peace back in April. Pastor Beck's teachings from Fresh Expressions dovetailed and expanded the Houses of Peace vision for our context in our mission field, the vineyard, you will, of southern New Hampshire. This vineyard that has been entrusted to us as God's people. Over the next few weeks, we'll be learning more about fresh expressions and how it relates to what we've been doing through Houses of Peace. For today, however, we'll focus only on a few key points as an introduction for the next few weeks with the help of William Barclay's comments. The vineyard is a motif used throughout the Bible to descri describe God's people and how God relates to them as we hear in the text from the prophet Isaiah. The parable of the vineyard conveys God's trust in human beings, in us. In the parable, the vineyard keeper entrusts the care of the vineyard to cultivators. And goes away. It's a story of God's patience. God sends many messengers to give the caretakers time to respond to God's appeal. It's a story of judgment. Ultimately, the care of the vineyard is taken away from the cultivators and given to others when the cultivators do not produce the fruit that the master desires. But it's also a story of human beings. The human beings in the story, the cultivators of the vineyard, are equipped with everything they need. The hedge, the wine press, the tower. Barclay writes, God does not only give us a task to do, God also gives us the means whereby to do it. It's a story of freedom. The cultivators were given the opportunity to carry out the task as they liked. God entrusted the work to them. They were given free will to respond. It's also a story of answerability, since we all will face a day of reckoning. We all will be held accountable for how we have carried out the work that God has entrusted us to do. It's a story of the deliberateness of human sin. The cultivators know exactly what they are doing when they mistreat the servants of the master and ultimately the son when they kill him. But it's also a story about Jesus, the claim of Jesus as he lifts himself out of the succession of the prophets. Those who came before were messengers of God. Clearly, they were servants. But here, Jesus boldly claims himself to be the Son. It's also a story of the sacrifice of Jesus. Jesus knew what lay ahead as he confronted the religious leaders in this way. He knew that he would be rejected and die at the hands of the wicked tenants. And he goes willingly and open-eyed to his death.
Friends, we've been entrusted with a vineyard. And what is the vineyard? If not the relationships that we nurture and strengthen here in our fellowship, if not the people that we interact with on a day-to-day basis among our families, among our friends and coworkers, those we meet in our daily routines, weekly routines. What is our intentionality around those relationships? But before we conclude today, I'd like to share one last piece of Pastor Beck's story. Partway through the retreat, Pastor Beck told uh, that he had been serving with Wildwood United Methodist Church. And he received a call from the bishop to see if he would be willing to take on a new appointment at St. Mark's United Methodist Church in Ocala, Florida. Pastor Beck was floored by this invitation since he shared with us He had been born addicted to drugs. He never knew his father. His grandparents adopted him. And the church that helped raise him was St. Mark's United Methodist Church in Ocala, Florida. Pastor Beck had been through several iterations of rehab, had been to jail multiple times. And in time, the call that God proclaimed in Pastor Beck's life partly through this expression of grace in his life through St. Mark's UMC, led led Michael to call on God. And through a long journey, God ultimately healed him and led him to further his studies, ultimately for him to become an ordained elder, seminary professor, and our teacher over this past week for the retreat. The stone rejected. I would imagine that there were many who, as they looked at Pastor Beck's life some years ago would have shaken their heads and seen a lost cause as he was selling drugs and using drugs, falling, getting up again. But God had other plans in Pastor Beck's life. His story recalls for me a passage from 1 Corinthians. 
Consider your own call, brothers and sisters. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world, things that are not, to abolish things that are, so that no one might boast in the presence of God. In contrast, God is why you are in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God, and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, in order that, as it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. The stone rejected. Cast aside. Our Lord and Redeemer. God is at work among the United Methodist Church, brothers and sisters. God is at work among us. Who are the Michaels in our lives? Who are the rejected and cast aside that we might embrace, that we might extend a word of hope, a word of trust, a word of belonging, and over the next few weeks, we'll be exploring fresh expressions because God has given us all we need. Hallelujah. <laughs> God has given us all we need. Amen. Our next hymn, Please Rise. Jesus Calls Us O'er the Tumult. you to our confession and pardon. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
hear the good news. Christ has walked as we have walked, has died as we will die, and yet he still brings us to new life. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Let us share signs, waves, hugs, come on now, <laughs> expressions of God's peace. As forgiven and reconciled people, let us offer ourselves and our gifts to God. Let us pray. Holy One, we bless your name. Thank you for such expression of humility, such steadfast, tenacious love. as witnessed, as proclaimed among humanity through Jesus Christ. Thank you, God, that he is our cornerstone. Though rejected and despised, he proclaims a word of forgiveness, of transformation, of redemption, of your promises to make the world new. Receive these gifts, receive our very lives to the building of your kingdom and may it always and ever be established on the foundation of your perfect love. Amen. Our final hymn, The Church is One Foundation, number 554 in the United Methodist Hymnal.
the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord turn his face toward you and grant you peace. Go in peace. The communion, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit will be with you all. Amen.